Hello, I'm Brian. I'm a Salesforce and Pardot consultant with Rotiv. We're an official Salesforce partner and we help small businesses automate their processes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a report for product schedules in Salesforce. So at this point, we've already set up schedules. We've shown how to use it. Hopefully the sales team has started using it and customizing it and working it into their opportunity management process. If you have any questions on using schedules or setting it up, take a look at a couple other videos we've created. Links are in the description. So to report on schedules, this is probably the most important part after using them. You can go into the reports tab and click new report. There should already be a custom report type that was automatically generated for you here. Just search for schedules and you'll see opportunities with products and schedules and hit continue. So what this report type is showing us is it's actually reporting on the schedule records themselves. So it's those records that we were able to customize and change the amount of that are tied to a specific date. And they have a quantity or they have a currency amount attached to them. So it's looking at that record and it's also pulling data from the opportunity product line item that it's connected to. And it's also pulling data from the opportunity that that opportunity product is related to. You can see that on the left-hand side, if you open up this field drawer here, you can see what data we have available in this report. So we have opportunity information, product information, and schedule information all available to us here. So what we wanna do is let's just first of all, get some data into this report to work with. So click on filters and update the close date or the opportunity status as you see fit. So in my demo environment, I added schedules to opportunities that have not yet been closed. So they're not showing up here. Most likely what you're gonna wanna see is, is both in two different reports. You're probably gonna wanna see what's my forecast for opportunities that have been closed. So you know what revenue is gonna be coming in or, or what quantity of products need to go out. But you also might wanna look at your opportunities that are still open to give you your forecast of you know, what, what could happen in the future. But at this point, I'm just gonna open up all these filters. So close date, I'll set to all time, opportunity status, I'll set to any. And now we've got some of these schedule records coming through. And right off the bat in our outline, we can see who the opportunity owner is, what the name of the opportunity is, the amount, the stage of that opportunity. And then we get some details about the product, like the name of the product, that's important what the quantity was, what the sales price was, and what that total price is. And if we scroll further over, we get some more details about the schedule. So we have a lot of information in this report. So let's start to clean this up. I'm gonna get rid of the opportunity owner, get rid of type, the total amount of the opportunity, I'm not really worried about that. Close date, I'm not too concerned with. Stage, I would skip that for now. Owner role, created date. There's a lot of extra information here. What's most important is our product schedule information. So on the left-hand side, it's really the schedule month that I wanna see. And now we also have product month and product description. Let's get rid of those too. Product date, we can get rid of that. List price, total price. I mean, these can be helpful when you're trying to evaluate an opportunity as a whole, but at the heart of it, I wanna know for the months in the future, how much revenue should I expect or how much product is gonna go out the door. And so we have schedule amount and schedule quantity. That's great. That is showing us how much product or how much revenue is being exchanged. What we need though is the date. So over here we have schedule month. I'm gonna add that in. That's how we like to look at things here. But of course you could add schedule quarter as well. So if we look over at our table, we can see the month is listed there. All right, next step would be to group by the month. So I'm gonna group rows by this field. Go ahead and choose group date by calendar month as well, just to make sure that we're looking at things month by month instead of it accidentally getting grouped by say the first or, or the second. Okay, so now we have the schedule records grouped by month. That's great. If we look at schedule amount and schedule quantity, they're already being summed up by month, which is also helpful. And so I'm gonna add a chart at this point. So I'll add our chart and then change the settings from bar to column. And now we can see month over month what the sum of the schedule amount is gonna be. We could either look at that or we could look at the quantity. Okay, so here is what it would look like with our sum of schedule quantity, or we could look at the sum of schedule amount. Now we probably want this, we wanna do this in two different reports. So it's almost exactly the same, we're just changing what we're gonna plot. So we'll do quantity for now, 
and then I'm gonna click Run. Because of course, in the edit screen, we're just looking at a preview of the data. We're not looking at all of the data. So if we're looking here in 2022, in January, uh, hopefully, we should have sent out 25 units. And then from February on, we had a 1,083 for each of those months for an entire year. And then it falls off. February, we've got a pretty low month, only 53 units are scheduled. So now we've got a report. We can actually see over a period of time and across multiple opportunities, either how much of a particular product has been scheduled based on quantity or how much revenue we should expect to come in based off a revenue schedule. Now, this is a high level looking across all products and all opportunities. What you'll wanna do is just add some additional filters. Maybe just look at closed one opportunities and likely filter the product name as well so that you know, are we just looking at product A or product B to help you plan and forecast for whatever that, that future demand is gonna be. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and click subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.